it seems like the royal family has a traditional way of doing just about everything. I think um, you know, one, one, th one step at a time and hopefully we'll, we'll start a family in the near future. And having a baby is no exception. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are excited to welcome their first child into the world, but there is a ton of things which need to be done first. The royal family has come a long way since men were barred from the delivery room, and Prince Harry is going above and beyond to make sure his baby will be taken care of. We'll let you know what it's like to have a royal child and what Meghan and Harry are doing to get ready. Pregnancy and childbirth can be unpredictable, but this doesn't mean moms-to-be can't plan ahead. It's not uncommon for them to come up with birth plans which detail everything they would like to experience in the delivery room. One of the first questions many expectant mothers have to answer is who they want near them during childbirth. It used to be absolutely unheard of for men in the royal family to be there when their wives were giving birth. Even Prince Philip missed the birth of his son Prince Charles. What was he doing instead? He was out playing squash while his wife was in labor. But once he got the word that his son had safely arrived, he showed up with a bouquet of flowers for the queen and promptly declared that his newborn son looked like a plum pudding. It's a British thing. Not only was Prince Philip missing from the birth of Prince Charles, but so was another figure many had expected to be there. It used to be customary for the British Home Secretary to be present at royal births to make sure there were no instances of baby swapping going on. This used to be a real concern, but this strange tradition has thankfully been phased out. And by the time Queen Elizabeth gave birth to her fourth child, Prince Andrew, she had enough of laboring alone. She had read about the importance of having support in the delivery room and insisted Prince Philip be by her side. Now, the tradition of royal fathers missing out on the births of their children has been completely changed. It would be considered extremely odd if Prince Harry wasn't present for the birth of his child. While some people go into parenthood reluctantly, both Harry and Meghan have always been upfront about their desire to have children, even before they met one another. During a 2015 interview, Prince Harry claimed he was eager to have a child, but had not yet found anyone he felt he could share the experience with. You know, it will happen when it's, when it's going to happen. Of course, I'd love to have kids right now, but... Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a process. Um, hopefully I'm doing all right by myself. It would be great to have someone else next to me is to, sort of sh to share the pressure. That same year, Meghan Markle remarked she was thrilled to have become an actress, but was looking forward to starting a family in the future. Soon after, Meghan and Harry were set up by a mutual friend, and now they're expecting their first child together. Maybe those Disney fairy tales about ending up with a handsome prince weren't so far-fetched after all. And if you follow the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, which we're guessing you do, you probably notice these two have always loved interacting with children. In general, members of the royal family avoid making physical contact with members of the general public. It's nothing personal and has nothing to do with them being stuck up. It's really due to the fact that they don't want to get sick and endless handshaking is a great way to spread germs. This is why you'll often see them wearing gloves or carrying clutches instead of purses so they have excuses to not touch people. But when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex met with a group of blind children, they knew they had to break some of the rules. The two knelt down to allow the children to touch their faces, and one of the children presented Meghan Markle with a card she had made for her using Braille. When it comes to setting up a home for his own child, Prince Harry has some strong opinions on where he wants to live. It's well known that while Prince Harry loves his family, he isn't the biggest fan of royal life. He claims he would never want to be king and would only take on the title out of a sense of duty and obligation if the opportunity ever arose. Prince Harry grew up at Kensington Palace, where he was constantly in the public eye. This is something he wants his own child to be able to avoid, so he set his sights on a much more private abode. His brother, Prince William, will most likely inherit the throne after the father, Prince Charles. And Prince William has three children who are further in the line of succession than Harry. This means it's highly unlikely Prince Harry would ever become king, and it's even more unlikely his child will ever end up being king or queen. Therefore, it's entirely possible his child will be able to live a quieter life than his niece and nephews. Not only will they have less royal responsibilities, but their father wants them to have as normal an upbringing as possible. While Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis make their home at Kensington Palace, Prince Harry is not interested in living there with his new family. And luckily, while privacy can be an issue at times, there are a lot of benefits which come with being a member of the royal family. Harry and Meghan have no shortage of housing options to choose from, and they've settled on the Frogmore House. Some renovations will have to be made in order to get the place ready, but Harry and Meghan think it's the perfect perfect place for their family. And apparently, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie helped them make the decision by telling them about their wonderful childhood spent 
Regent in Windsor. But it's been a long time since the two princesses were little girls, and the Frogmore House has fallen into disrepair during that time. It's mainly been used as an employee housing and needs some major maintenance to get up to snuff. They'll have to do some work on the residence itself, as well as landscaping on the grounds. All in all, it's estimated they will need to spend between $2.5 million and $3.8 million when all is said and done. But what kind of renovations are these newlyweds undertaking? It's a lot more than simply painting a nursery pink or blue. They're going to add a unit which uses green energy to provide heating and hot water, and install some extra staircases and fireplaces. In addition, they're also going to have to install some strict security features, but of course, the details of these measures is confidential. Reportedly, they will be adding a private gym and, of course, a nursery for the new addition. There will also be a mother-in-law suite for Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, to utilize when she comes to visit her new grandchild. It used to be tradition for royal women to give birth at home, but Princess Diana decided against doing so when she had her children. Instead, she gave birth to both William and Harry at St. Mary's Hospital in London. And when it came time for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge to welcome their three children into the world, they also chose to go with St. Mary's. However, there are a number of sources who seem to think Meghan will choose a different route. It's possible she may choose a smaller hospital or even opt for a home birth in order to feel more comfortable and stay out of the spotlight. There have even been rumors going around that Meghan wants to have as natural a birth as possible and is taking classes on hypnobirthing. While hypnobirthing may sound kind of crazy, it's really just a technique designed to encourage a mind-body connection while giving birth. It's really just a way for mothers to feel peaceful and calm during their birth experience, and even celebs like Jessica Alba attest to its effectiveness. Although Meghan may opt for a more natural birth plan, her pregnancy has no doubt been marked by tons of medical checkups. At age 37, Meghan Megan's pregnancy is considered to be on the risky side of things as far as complications are concerned. But we're sure Megan is getting the best possible medical care and seems to be doing just fine. During Kate Middleton's pregnancies, she was stricken with hyperemesis gravidarum, which means she experienced intense morning sickness. Understandably, she often looked quite tired during public appearances as a result. Because of this condition, Kate was forced to announce her pregnancies earlier than she would have preferred, but Megan seems to have avoided the fate of her sister-in-law. While Megan and Harry have every intention of being hands-on parents, it's not surprising to learn they also want a little bit of help dealing with their new arrival. Allegedly, Meghan is trying to convince her mother to relocate to England, but only time will tell if Doria decides to make the move. In the meantime, Meghan and Harry are interviewing nannies in anticipation of their new arrival. Even for average families, it can be tough to find quality childcare, and the expectation placed on royal nannies are in a whole other realm. Most people expect their nannies to be able to drive, but royal families need their nannies to be trained in tactical driving maneuvers in case they need to swiftly get their charges to safety. Royal nannies must also undergo self-defense training, and most of them speak multiple languages. When you need your nanny to have martial arts training, the interview process tends to get pretty lengthy. Another difficult task Meghan and Harry are working on is coming up with a name for their baby. According to Meghan, the two of them have a very long list of names and are having trouble choosing their favorites. To complicate the matter is the fact that Meghan and Harry want the sex of their child to be a surprise, so they won't know until the baby is born. But when it comes to the court of public opinion, many people seem to feel strongly that Meghan and Harry will have a baby girl. Perhaps this is because many people believe the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will end up naming their child after Harry's late mother, Princess Diana. Other historical names including Alice, Victoria, Grace, and of course Elizabeth are also believed to be in the running. But if you're eager to know what the new baby's name will be, the bad news is you may have to wait a while. It's not uncommon for royal family members to make the public wait to find out the name of their baby. When Prince since Louis was born, William and Kate kept us waiting four days to find out his name. When questioned about his newest grandchild, Prince Charles had some fun jokingly suggesting names including Kylie, Shane, Edna, or Les. You know, the names you wouldn't typically find in the royal family tree. While we are free to guess and even place bets, we're sure we won't learn the child's real name until the moment Meghan and Harry are ready to share that information. And in addition to the child's name given by his or her parents, they will also receive a title. This too has been cause for speculation among people who are fans of the royal family. Royal titles can be somewhat confusing, and some people incorrectly assume the child of Meghan and Harry will automatically be a prince or princess. After all, Harry is a prince, and his brother's children all hold the title of prince or princess. But in reality, only the firstborn child of Prince William, Prince George, automatically earned the title per royal tradition. But the queen has the power to give out whatever titles she sees fit. So she decreed all of William and Kate's children would be given the title of prince or princess. But unlike Prince William, Prince Harry will most likely never become a king, and neither will his child. 
When his child is born, they will automatically gain the title Earl or Lady. Of course, the Queen could override this, but only time will tell if she decides to. After all, she could also grant her husband the title of King, but she has not done so in all this time, and he doesn't seem to mind one bit. What do you think about all that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are doing to get ready for their new baby? Do you think they're going way overboard, or have they gotten things just right? Let us know what you think in the comments section, and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at The Taco. Bye for now!